Greetings everyone, welcome to Product One's technical web series. Uh, today we're going to be covering Creo Simulation Live. Okay, so June of 2018, last year, uh, PDC made this announcement that they partnered with uh, ANSYS. And the result of that partnership, uh, there was what we call Creo Simulation Live, which is real-time structural thermal and modal analysis within the Creo environment. So how does this work? So we have this perception uh, nowadays that structural analysis has to happen right at the end of the design process. So what PDC envisage through the partnership with ANSYS is you can have, you can have real time structural analysis within the concept right up to the detailed design. Because what tends to happen in, in many instances, you find that the designer and the analysts are not the same person. And you find that the designer will send that design that they've made, that they've actually finished to the analyst who sits uh, in a different company. So it could this could be a consultant, or it could also be somebody that's not using the same software as the designer. So you have issues in terms of importing data, dump geometry and all of that. So the analyst will take that, refine the model, remove the rounds and chamfers and all the cutouts that he does not need, run the analysis, generate the report, and based on the results, send that back to the designer for them to make more, uh, I would call it, refinement of that design. Then the process will have to carry on again. The designer will send it back to the analysis. And that particular process does take a long time and it does impact time to market and it, it might also impact the number of prototypes. Now with Creo Simulation Live, you have an instantaneous interactive guidance of concepts and detailed design. So how does that work? So if I were to be analyzing this chassis here for the snowmobile, this component is going to be made out of casting or cast iron or whatever the case is. So as a designer, I wouldn't know what is the best possible design of this. And I won't even know what sort of uh, design decisions I can actually make that will have a greater impact onto the structural analysis later on. So if I have a simulation live, this is what I can actually do. I can take this product or this component that I'm interested in and say, you know what, now that I've got, let's say, simulation live, I can do the following. I can say, I want to create a boundary condition in that particular region. Then you can also put in what you call loads or loading cases that you need. So for this case, I'm going to have a load case like this with obviously two values. Okay. So what I can also do is uh, I can say within the simulation environment, I can add another load here and let's say it's also going to be Newtons and maybe like that. We can also add other features as well. All right. So this is what I have and that's all that you need to do within the Creo simulation live environment. So if I run this, you will be aware that this model, I did not remove the rounds, I did not remove the chamfers. It's basically as, uh, as detailed as you as it can be so instantly i get the results that i desire within this environment and the reason how you get this is because of the creo simulation lab uses gpu instead of the cpu to do the computation in the background okay so you need a special graphics card i'll get to that a little bit later so if you can have a look there at the moment i've got maximum von Mises stress as 50, 55 megapascals and I can look at deformation and all the other stuff as well but we'll stick to von Mises stress at the moment but then I can do something extra with this I can say I'm more interested in the stresses in that particular region it's a 51 megapascals and I can actually save this I'm only saving it so that at least I can refer to it a little bit later now let's say this design I need to put the von Mises stress in that region to be let's say 30 megapascals. So bear in mind, I have not left the simulation environment. So that means that within this environment, 
if I'm a, let's say, designer, I can say, I want to add more strengthening ribs onto this design. So all I do is add the strengthening ribs and the goal here is to reduce that von Meissen stress. Of course, I can make this parametric, but you can also make direct modeling changes using flexible modeling where you can grab surfaces and thicken them and modify rounds and so forth. And that's brilliant for imported geometry. All right, so this now is going to be my new design and instantaneously you'll see that this value here changes it moved from 51 megapascals right up to uh, 50 megapascals so it did not make much of an impact so can you imagine if you're a designer you just made that change you've paid a lot of money for an analyst to redo this and you only found that you've made very little uh, uh, impact onto that now with clear simulation lab i can say hold on a second I know that, okay, this is where I want to make impact. So I can add an extra element onto this rib. And just like that, the analysis will run in the background instantaneously within this environment. And now I will get to see the impact of my change. So you can see that I'm now where I needed to be, which is below 30 megapascals. I'm now on 25 megapascals. So that means that this product makes designers make better design decisions that are based on structural analysis results, okay? As I said before, you don't have to have parametric changes like this. You can, within the analysis results, I can actually say, how about I modify, for an example, this fillet, make it bigger for whatever reason, or grab that surface and actually move that. So you can make those type of changes if you were having an imported geometry. So what we have here was in general, what we had here was in general structural analysis within the, the, the part environment. So what happens if I've got an assembly? The process is exactly the same. So for the sake of time, I already have here my loads and my constraint onto this particular part. And what I can actually do inside this I will actually run this analysis as well. You see that it takes uh, very, very quick. And due to the fact that I don't even have a certified graphics card, you see that there are certain open gaps or surfaces that I start to appear. This is because you need, as I said, you need a graphics card, uh, NVIDIA with a CUDA enabled graphics card. You need uh, to have at least a minimum four gig RAM. Uh, many people or many analysts will probably maybe prefer to have 8 gig of RAM and so forth. So, but what you can actually do is you can also filter out in terms of speed or accuracy. So if I were to even push my scale into accuracy, you'll see that the results, they start to become more refined. But if I had, for an example, a very nice graphics card onto this, I will actually get a, a, a very nice and cleaner model. So that information for an example, for Creo Simulation Lab, you need a CUDA-enabled graphics card with minimum 4 gig RAM. And it does not even need to be an NVIDIA. It can even be a, a GeForce uh, graphics card. So we have actually have a machine here that actually runs that, and it's doing brilliantly. So if you need further details onto this, please come, uh, come back to us. So now that I've actually got these results, I can say, I'm more interested in finding out what's the deformation on this. So at the moment, it's sitting at 1.2 millimeters. So I can say, you know what, that is too much. So I can add, for an example, strengthening beams onto this particular design. And instantaneously, the analysis will rerun. And just like that, you'll see this value dropping from 1.5 to 1.2 millimeters. And the idea on this is I now can make better decisions uh, within the design environment using Creo Simulation Live. Until next time, if you've got any questions, and don't forget to hit the, uh, the like button. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. And until next time, thank you so much.